science fiction, not so much. It's a chilly Tuesday night here in Virginia, and time for another episode of the new show. Tonight I'm talking about Space 1999. Now, if you're not familiar with it, Space 1999 was a science fiction series uh, produced by Jerry and Sylvia Anderson. It ran from 1975 to 1977. It's noteworthy for its production design. In general, the, the sets and the special effects especially were state-of-the-art for a television show of that time. On an earlier episode, I talked about the Star Lost, the disastrous science fiction show from 1973 that had planned to have the kind of effects that had been used in 2001 but done on a budget for a TV show. Well, the Star Lost didn't achieve that aim. Space 1999 did. All the model and miniature designs on this show were, were outstanding. They had a sectional, modular look uh, that still looks believable today. Part of the strength of the show is how much time and effort they put into their miniatures. You know, there, there were a lot of uh, TV shows and movies where you could watch you know, miniatures on the screen and be like, oh yeah, that looks fake. But Space 1999, they tended to keep the you know, uh, compositing, you know, matting to a minimum. So a lot of the spaceship effects just really looked nice and crisp. It gave it an authenticity. It gave it a it gave it a believability that that other shows of that kind did not have, especially at that time. If only they had had the writing to back it up. Similar to the Star Lost, Space 1999 got into a problem with writing that they did not have enough good writing to pull the show through. And really, who could you can't really blame them because the concept of the show was so kind of crazy and wonky to begin with, that a space station with hundreds of colonists on the moon get knocked out of orbit by nuclear explosions and get thrown off into space. So the idea of the show is that they're on the moon, they can't change its course or trajectory or do anything about it, and are pretty much helpless uh, to deal with any of the stuff they have to deal with. Somebody thought that would be a good idea for a show. Interestingly, though, a lot of the episodes end up focusing on how the inhabitants of Moon Base Alpha really have to try to find a reason to keep living, find a justification for their own existence, as they are now sort of permanent exiles. You know, they really have no home. Another thing that's highly unusual about the show is uh, the first season had this jamming Arabian disco theme song. And it's one of the most iconic theme songs probably of all time. I think they just wanted to be cutting edge. But we were talking about the writing. Yeah, Space 1999 ran out of good ideas. And by the time the second season rolled around, Fred Freeberger, a notorious television producer, was attached to the show. And the rumor about Freeberger was that when he was attached to a show, it was because he was going to kill it. And usually did by lowering the quality of the content and lowering the budgets. An example of that, look at season three of Star Trek compared to seasons one and two of the original series. Uh, season three of the show really took a nosedive. That's, it's the Fred Freeberger effect. When they would bring him on, he would kill shows. The second season of Space 1999 is very silly. Much more action-oriented, much more Saturday morning cartoon in its execution, but and the reason I titled the video the way I did, the first season of Space 1999 works really well as horror. And especially you know, if you're familiar with the British Hammer films, there's a lot of stuff in Space 1999 that feels like it could be out of a Hammer horror film. The second episode uh, is called Force of Life, and it has to do with a crew member being infected by this alien organism that consumes energy. And this guy is walking around the station, sucking the energy out of the machinery, causing people to freeze because he's drawing off their body heat. There's this great scene. You don't forget it if you've seen the episode where the, where the man who's possessed by this energy creature is walking down a hallway, and as he's walking forward, the lights are going off, you know, as he's, as he's coming forward. It's reminiscent of the scene in Akira when Tetsuo is escaping from the mental institution and he's, you know, blowing out the lights. There's another episode of Space 1999 called, uh, I think it's episode 14, 
Dragon's Domain. Apparently the story was based on the myth of St. George and the dragon. And the episode revolves around this Sargasso Sea of derelict spaceships above this planet that's inhabited by this horrible psychic tentacle creature that sucks people into it and then spits out smoking corpses. I think that was the most panic-inducing special effect I ever saw when I was a seven or eight-year-old when I was watching the show. It's very contrived and silly to watch it now, but, but the ideas of it and the, and the framing of it is still pretty spooky, uh, y you know, even if the writing and dialogue is very corny. But perhaps the finest example of horror on Space 1999 uh, is the excellent episode and when I say excellent, I mean, you can go watch it right now. It's still a pretty damn good episode of science fiction television. It's the episode Mission of the Darians, which co-stars Joan Collins. Mission of the Darians involves Moonbase Alpha running into a giant derelict colony ship from a planet called Daria. Civilization on board the ship has completely broken down. Most of the ship is irradiated, and the population have been stricken with cancers and mutations. And there's an elite central cast that claim, you know, their bloodline to the original noble families, and they're pretty much holding the entire ship for ransom. Worse, they ran out of food hundreds of years earlier and have been eating the population of the ship. <laughs> and they want to know if the Alphans want to join them on their uh, journey. What's great about the episode is that it's an example of the writers like taking the idea of their own show and characters and doing a mirror image of it that is horrifying. Seeing every wrong decision, you know, the set of characters could make in the future coming true. I know that probably sounds like something that's done all the time on television shows, you know, a character meeting their opposite, but I'm not sure is ever done as effectively as on Mission of the Darians. Another fun fact, if you've never seen it before and you are a science fiction fan, your ear will probably likely detect countless electronic sounds used in countless other films, especially Alien. The original Alien is loaded with sound effects from Space 1999. A couple of other uh, standout episodes I would also recommend would be, uh, I think, Episode 4, War Games and another episode called Voyager's Return. It has a really unique premise that I don't think has ever been done since. And what I'm saying is Space 1999, it, it, it had its, in, in its first season, had its own kind of distinct horror vibe. Like, uh, space was a scary place in this show. And in general, as long as they kept away from hard science, if you know anything at all about astronomy or physics, I mean, the, the show is full of just ludicrous lines of dialogue. But if you can get past that, and the pantsuits with, with bell-bottoms, and you have the urge for some late 70s dark sci-fi, there's some good stuff here beneath the surface in that first season. So, thanks again for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe, and check back for new content from the new show. And I'll see you next time.